Clarissa here. We are back in the limelight with yet another extraordinary entrepreneur. We are live. I am loving going live recently. I haven't done this in a very long time and we were recording a lot of our shows, but I've just going to decided I'm going to start going live. We're having a ball with it and uh and welcome to the show so before we get uh bring our guest on today i do want to remind you that you can listen to this interview on our podcast we've got 10 different platforms now very exciting so apple podcast google podcast digital uh, amazon music sorry iheart radio is a brand new entry uh this week stitcher spotify pandora podbean and and I think that's it. It was that that wasn't nine quite, but okay. I think it's almost nine. And the TV we're we're really really coming up uh, strongly on uh, Roku now, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, uh, and Google Play, Daily Motion. We're also still on YouTube, so that's really great. And then we do have, as you know, the digital magazine. So a uh, very cool entry this week we've got is PressReader.com. So in the limelight with Clarissa is Intelligent Media for the Savvy Entrepreneur. There's Mr. Orazio Pagani on the cover, the digital version, again, on PressReader.com, which is, uh, which is, you've got to get over there. It's so beautiful. There's every uh, publication on the planet is there. We are thrilled now have in the limelight with Clarissa magazine on that platform. Also, let's remind you about my newsdesk.com. One of the greatest places that I have found to put out my news uh, releases, my, my PR releases as well. Um, there you can uh, access thousands of journalists, monitor billions of sources and any subject matter. And you can even monitor your competition over there, which is never a bad thing to do just to kind of know what's going on uh, in the world and with your competition. So don't forget about then mynewsdesk.com, uh, ciao Salvatore, good to see you. And we're gonna bring in now our guest. So you know everybody, there she is, and her name is Shelly Golden. I met Shelly through the National Publicity Summit and was really excited about what she's doing. So I wanted to bring her on, she is, a fashion consultant, yes. She's also an image and personal branding consultant, but what she has started to do, and I'm so thrilled for her to tell us a couple of tips. Maybe she'll give me a couple too. She's okay. started to do Zoom makeovers. Yep, she's the Zoom makeover expert globally. People and, and, and companies and corporate, they're calling her to say, what is this all supposed to look like? Shelly, help us out. Welcome to the show, Shelly. Thank you. So glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, welcome. So what would the first steps be then to make sure that, you know, what is it that you're, right, let's say this. First of all, you and I both got the memo today. We got, the, we, <laughs> we didn't do this on purpose. Okay. Just, uh, we got dark hair, light eyes. we got our lips kind of closed. We got a scarf and the purple, uh, and the and purple we're, jacket. You know, kind of in the, you know, in the V crossover. Yeah, yeah, you yeah know, the subliminal lines. We're going to get to that too. Right. Really, really good to have you. But again, let's get to what, where does your eye as the, as an, as an image expert go to first? The first thing that you see is if the person is in the light or in the dark. That's the first thing you see. I mean, you notice it if you're if you're on Zoom a lot. You notice if people have really bad lighting, if they have glare in their glasses, if, yeah. if only one side of their face is lit, or perhaps they're sitting in front of a window and the light coming in the window is so bright that they're actually in the dark. That's right. That's right. So those are the first things that I kind of see too. I love that you have that flash of light behind you, which is really beautiful, and it gives just such beautiful a context to the entire uh, to the entire image that's coming in here. Let me ask you a few questions. So how is it then uh, that you decided? You know, I, I think I'm going to start helping people with their Zoom makeovers <laughs> because uh, I'm not kind of liking what I see. Well, how did you approach that subject? Yeah, I didn't think about it. It was just one of those things that happened. Um, I met a woman at the end of February. I feel like I have a little horse in my throat. A little. It's all right. We're it's you know it's the winter. It's the winter. We're all a little. We've all got a little something going on. But okay, you met a woman at the end of February. And she said, "Hey, let's do a workshop." And I'm like, "Okay, let's do a workshop together." And our first day to talk about it was in California, where we live. Was the first day of shelter in place. So yeah. you know, we were on a Zoom call and I said, well, I, I normally help people look good, feel confident 
in person, I could just help them look good, feel confident, as I say, in their box. Right. And that's how it happened. So I just created what I call the Zoom makeover. And I came up with kind of a default five steps to go through to help you look every look good in your box. And um, I can tell you what they are. Uh, okay. It's camera angle, lighting, background, mm -hmm. what color looks best on you in your space, because I'm a color consultant, so I'm really, really picky about colors. Right. And then lastly, for women who wear makeup, or women and men who wear makeup, uh, Zoom specific makeup techniques to really counterbalance the blue light coming off your monitor right? Uh, so, uh, to really create a three-dimensional look. And that's Absolutely. It. So what was the, what do you think that the biggest challenge is for people when they're working from home and they're, you know, they're on zoom freak once or frequently, I know I'm on all the time, you know, whether I'm doing this, you know, the interviews on StreamYard or I'm zooming for, for business calls, uh, you know, business conferences, cause they're not calls, obviously, you know, people see you. So what, right. what's the, like the biggest challenge that you see that people are having? The biggest challenge is lighting. I mean, that's, that's pretty clear. And I'll, the second challenge would really be where, what's a good background. I, I talk to people about backgrounds all the time, but lighting so my suggestion is, especially like you and I wear glasses, right. although you know, I, I, these are really computer glasses with a little bit of a reading prescription in it. Right. So my suggestion is have the lights at 10 o'clock and two o'clock so that they actually come on either side of your right. face. Right. Yep. So, so many people have these big ring lights that put them in front, put it in front well, of you. Yeah, these two rings in your glasses. And, right. Um, and another little, this is, this is my special little secret weapon. It's the easiest, cheapest hack that anyone can have is I suggest using fuchsia and yellow post-its and put them over your lights, whatever your lights are. Reason being, as a color consultant, if you mix fuchsia and yellow together, but like the bright yellow, not the original post-it yellow, Right. It creates a peachy color, and that's the right color to balance the blue light coming off of your monitor. It's right. cheap, and it's easy, and it doesn't matter whether you're light-skinned or dark-skinned. Right, yeah. There are a lot of lighting issues. I'd have to agree with you there. There truly are a lot of lighting issues. And the other thing that I do, if I may add, is that every time I start, I dim my, my computer light. So whereas I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I take my computer light all the way up, now you're probably going to see that you're going to see my, my computer mm -hmm. yeah. screen is right there in my eyes. Right. Yeah. So before I get started, I go down and you, you know, we're, we're pretty kind of dark right now, meaning that that light is so darkish that it wouldn't interfere. And I'm very mindful of, to, you know, where my main lights are as well. If I go like this, you'll see them. Right. Yep. So I try to make sure, right, that I keep my, you know, I don't disturb who would be watching this because those can be very distracting elements. Don't you agree? I do. And there's one like new tip that I want to share with everybody. About three, three and a half months ago, at least from the date that we are broadcasting this, Zoom had an update. And in the update, if you go into uh, settings, uh, computer video settings, there is a, a little checkbox for uh, adjust for low light. And if you go into your settings and click that, there will be a toggle and you can change the lighting. What? So it, it what it does, it doesn't just, it's not like lights that light up your face. It lightens everything in your box. So Very you cool. might want to actually lower your, your lights, at your, your direct lights right. so that everything gets light and this awesome. is great for morning like early morning meetings right um, and also evening and late afternoon meetings when it starts to get dark in your room right, right. It everything up super so how, how do you think i know that you lived in amsterdam and you studied some of the you know the dutch masters or some yeah. are just you know phenomenal um what do you think that that you, did you pick up anything from you know the artist and the artistry uh because i know i lived in italy for you know for 30 years so obviously what well, i also was was exposed to you know the gods of the artists right yeah. of, or the gods of art shall yeah, i say of course so, you know what was it that i mean did, does that help you 
compose differently as, as an image consultant and expert? It does. So actually when I'm working with people um, on how they look in online, I'm, I'm creating a painting. And in particular, um, I'm looking at, just like an artist, they show you where they want you to look first. Hmm. I often use the example of the girl with the pearl earring. Yes. So by Johannes Vermeer. Yes, so yes, he, yes. Love he, her. So whatever is white and light in your Zoom box will always right. catch attention first. first. And so Vermeer used titanium white, which is the whitest of the whites. Right. Because he wanted you to look at the earring. So I am looking at where does your eye go first, which is usually what is light. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, so I'm looking at contrast, light and dark, but also just like the artist, they have subliminal lines of perspective. Yes. And so even in my Zoom box, you can't see all of my Zoom box, but I have two subliminal lines. I have some, flowers, like make that happen. Uh, some flowers over here. Yeah, I was trying to see if I can make that happen. I don't know. I have know. my little, thank God, new little lightweight brown glasses. I have this round, well, let's see, a round circle on the cabinet and the edge of the cabinet. And it What's actually, um, here, okay, and it creates this diagonal. And my eyes are in that diagonal. Stay in that, stay in that uh, shot. I also have another diagonal. I have this rectangular plane over here. I have a rectangular plane over here. And again, my eyes, oops, are in, in the middle of that, uh, of that diagonal. So you're looking at my eyes about right here. So I've got these two intersecting subliminal lines. So you're forced to look at my eyes. You're forced to look at my face. And by wearing this light color uh, below my face under a bright color, I'm drawing your eye downward so that you look at my torso and my body so that you can read my subliminal um, nonverbal cues, which is really important because that's what we're missing on Zoom or whatever platform you're, that. you're on. That mm -hmm. is really, really cool. I'm going to take you off a second. So stay right there. I'm going to show you my background. It's just clutter. <laughs> It's a little more cluttered, but you know, it is, I, I keep most of it in the dark and I love the fact that I just have this one, you know, light bit. That's really what I want people to see most is, That's you know, it. my logo. So for me, it's important in media that people see the logo, that it's kind of bright and light and, uh, and, and that I get the message across that we are, you know, in the limelight TV, whereas you obviously have something else going on as in the image consultant that you are. And by the way, you can critique, we can critique me. Let's, let's do that after the show. If you okay, yeah. Let's go ahead, you know, and critique, that will be good with that too. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's that important. I'm going to say this though, you and I are in the business and you and I are a little bit pickier. We've, we've, we, we've, you know, we've, we've had different exposures, if you will. I grew up with the grandmasters of, of the runway, you know, the Versaces, the Valentinos, the Armanis, the Ferrays. I was on every runway and I, I could, I learned through those masters when you learn through the artists, the, 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 the painters. Um, do people need to get, I'm, I'm sure they're asking themselves, do we need to get really that you know, that, uh, I'm trying to find the right word, um, that, you know, that worried about the, every aspect of our background, or is it just more about lighting and maybe good makeup? No, it's not. It actually is everything, every aspect for a couple of reasons. First of all, especially since everybody's doing business online, yeah. it's no longer just you, it's yeah. you and everything in your box. Mm -hmm. And what it is that I, work with people on, I work with clients, I work with companies, is I'm helping people look more trustworthy. I'm helping people engage with you more yeah. so that it actually feels like you're just sitting on the other side of the table, really helping improve your rapport and most importantly, elevate your brand, yeah. which is super important, you know, because yeah. you might have a great product, but if you have like a, you know, if you're sitting in a garage, you know, it, it, it might not match your product. So I try to match your message and your brand and how people are perceiving, perceiving you. 
you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was going to go right there to brand because no matter where you are and what you're doing, uh, uh, you know, you are always the brand. You know, I am, you are, we are the brand. People are yeah. absolutely looking to us and, you know, they're, they are critiquing whether we like it or not. I mean, whether they know it or not, uh, a lot of times they're critiquing, you know, those famous, what was it? Six seconds to make an impression. Now it's really uh, six milliseconds. Right. right. It, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not people that are thinking, yeah, we think much more quickly now than we used to. And we make that decision uh, upon the, you know, what is that perception uh, of what we're seeing almost in instantaneously. Right. So I really agree with you that it's so, so super important. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to, uh, yeah, that brand we bring, we always remember that we are the brand, what we do, what we say, what comes out of our mouths, right. um, you know, all of that is, is, is helping others formulate an opinion of you. I do want to bring everybody's attention to the ticker at the bottom. You'll see ShellyGoldenStyle.com. You can get over there for a lot more information. Shelly, I love your website because you have a lot of, before and after pictures, which is really cool, so people can get over there and 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 see the actual difference that you're making from before and after for 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 people that have uh, you know had uh, been on Zoom beforehand and probably were a little lost, and then after you put in your golden touch, um, I know that you uh, are uh, golden touch. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> your golden touch. So here's what your website says: you're helping them to improve the camera angle their lighting, background and surroundings we've talked about, and then Zoom specific makeup techniques. Please, please do tell. Okay, you know, it's pretty basic, pretty simple. So we are on a two dimensional platform. And of course, especially women who, one of the things that I see most often, you know, you, you get the unit look, you know, yeah. so how, so how did you, just to try to create different, uh, like, a, a three-dimensional space. So I have four points on the face that I focus on. Do you want so me to go back? Do you want me to make you full screen again? No, that's okay. Okay. All right. I didn't know if you were going to be showing your surroundings. Go ahead. No, no. So four points on the face. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm having, I'm really aiming so that people can zoom in on your face because that's the most important thing is that they will focus in on you. This, this is all nice around you. So four points. Think of a bullseye. You know, you want a bullseye on your face. You have the top of a bullseye, which is either your eyebrows right. or the top of your glasses. So for women and men, well, women who do not wear glasses and have silver or blonde eyebrows, you might want to pencil them in just a little bit to give the top of the bullseye. The framing. Mm -hmm. the framing. I, always suggest wearing a little bit of lipstick. Why? It, it, it doesn't have to be darker, I, I, but something that shows up more so that occasionally, you know, and everybody see, hears it, all of a sudden the sound will go out for a, 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 an instant of a second, one second, two seconds. But this way, people can continue to read your lips. Mm -hmm. Oh, so interesting. If, okay. And also they will focus on your mouth if, if it's a little bit more, if there's more contrast. So they will focus on your mouth while you're talking to them. Right. The other two points, so that's top, your eyebrows, lips. And then uh, with contour, how to create higher cheekbones, like a thinner, a little, little more contrast, right. and the jawline. So let's start at the bottom. The bottom, of, <laughs> the bottom, the bottom of, of, of the jaw, the bottom of the bullseye. So I just, again, the camera picks up light and dark. So whatever is dark will be a shadow. And it doesn't right. matter the color because the camera can't tell what color it is. Wow. So if you literally take your blush, and I usually make my, my brush a little harder so I could actually draw right. a line. And I start on my jowl, especially mm -hmm. for women who have jowls. Right. You don't want to go around the jowls. You want to go right over those jowls and literally draw a line around your chin, right. pull it down a little bit. So what you're doing is you're actually creating a shadow under your chin. Mm -hmm. So, the, so the people looking at you can see the difference from the front of your face, right under your chin and your neck. And it's just, there's a little bit more three dimensionality to it. Yeah. Um, and, That's and, makeup creating the illusion. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Also, un, also, unlike street makeup, where you would normally put a little bit of blush right on the apple of your cheek, you don't want to do that because the camera picks up light 
first. Right. So whatever light will come to the foreground. Right. So you want to keep this as light as possible. This is for light skinned women. But what I do is I take my brush again with, I, I in my compact, it's brush and contour mixed together. And I actually make a little semicircle under and around my cheekbone back okay. up to my ear so that I keep the lightest part. I keep this with no blush. Again, this is this is not street makeup. And right. it's a pretty dark line. I don't know yep. if you can yeah. see that line. It looks like 80s blush. <laughs> yes. But when you're when I'm looking in front of you, it yep. looks like I have tight cheekbones. Yes, it is. It looks great. It but really I have great. I have no cheekbones. So I, yeah, well, I, you wouldn't be, I mean, you, it looks spectacular from here because you do. So there you are again, everyone with makeup, creating that illusion. Shelly, that was, that was some, they were some fabulous tips. Thank you so much. Welcome. We Welcome. are already at the end of this show, but I'm going to remind everybody, not only can you uh, find Shelly and, and can, uh, connect with her on ShellyGoldenStyle.com, but you've got Shelly Golden Style on Facebook, Twitter, oh, sorry, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You've got your own channel there. Yep. All right. And then we, I think you had said something. I'm going to double check that there was a, uh, that you're giving away a free gift, which th we thank you for the 12 easy tips to improve your lighting and background on zoom. And that is at shellygoldenstyle.com slash free dash checklist. All right, everybody. That's it for uh, this live. We went live. I don't know if I told you that. Did we tell you that? Show? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that you were on. This is, these are great tips for everybody that zooming, you know, everywhere because I've been zooming for months now. And uh, those are some really extraordinary tips. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to stay right there, Shelly, while I give appointment to everybody. I think we've got another live coming up at one o'clock MST. So noon PST and four EST. I think I got that right. Thanks, Shelly. We'll be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye, everyone, for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the In the Limelight podcast, intelligent media for the savvy entrepreneur. You can listen to this and all of my podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, and Inspired News Radio. You'll find all of my videos and the In the Limelight digital magazine on clarissabert.com. And don't forget to connect with me on social pretty much anywhere. Stay well until we meet again in the limelight.